2K Sports in association with the PGA Tour is proud to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Bluff Championship is about to begin. I'm Luke Elvey alongside Rich Beam in the booth and out on the course following our feature group is the delightful Henny Koyak. Hello Henny. Hi Luke, great to be with you guys. Now this group will be one to watch today. Lots of chatter on social media leading up to this pairing. We have a rookie on tour who has set very specific goals for themselves and their first one is to beat their playing partner this week. Love it Henny. This will make for an extra layer of excitement. It always adds a bit more drama to an event when we can follow a competition within a competition. Can't wait to see what happens in our feature group throughout this tournament. That dog will hunt. This shot here from about 240 yards. Seems to have chosen the three wood. Well, that's showcasing their power there, Rich. Using all of his muscles to get that one home in two. Oh, you know you want to. That's disappointing. A little too cautious on that effort there, Luke. Currently one under for the tournament. One of our on-course reporters, John McCarthy, has been out surveying the scene here in preparation for today's broadcast. John, what are some of the things the players will be looking out for today at Craggy Heights? Well, Luke, I think one of the first things the players are going to be looking at uh, is really, literally, the shapes of these fairways. They are laid out in a way that often there are little pockets of fairway that the players can hit to. And uh, if they do end up safe, they can really open up options on their approach shots, but uh, they're going to have to be confident in their swing to reap those rewards. Another thing to watch for are holes like the fifth, where the fairway narrows significantly the further out you hit your tee shot. There's also holes like the par 4 17th, where you can drive the green, yes, but there is a lot of danger in the form of water and sand around the green to contend with. So it's very much a risk-reward course. Can't wait to just sit back and watch how these professionals take this course on. Should be a fun week here at Craigie Heights. He's in a share of ninth place. Gotta like it. Moving up the leaderboard, never a bad thing. Here we are at the third. Now, a long range putt coming up here. It'd be good to make a bomb, wouldn't it? Oh, I don't mind this par putt. Looking better. That wasn't your best effort, was it? Yeah, you'll take that. And now to Bubba Watson. He's two strokes behind his rival this week. Oh my, how about that for a par? And now this is why you can never get comfortable, even if you're leading a PGA Tour Pro. This is what they do. They mean business. Let's see what happens here on the fourth.
Well, I'm sure it looked better in their mind before they hit it. Most golfers these days, Rich, are, are quite generic style players. It's that hit it as far as you can, knock it on the green, try and hold some parts. But with Bubba Watson, we just got the artist back in the game, didn't we? We had someone who was prepared to do whatever it needed to be to get that ball in the hole. He's just astonishing to watch. You know, to me, Luke, I think Bubba was born in the wrong era. I think he would have been better served with persimmon woods, a lot of golf balls, and, and blades, and I think that he would be an even bigger impact on the game than he currently is, if that's even possible. I watch what he does with the modern equipment, and it's mind-blowing. He's one of the few players, Luke, that I will actually go in the driving range and watch hit golf shots because it is so fun to watch him aim 30 yards left and just try and hit these big sweeping hooks and fades and every. I mean, it's just unbelievable what he can do with the golf ball. His eye-hand coordination is simply the best in the game. like that didn't you well you seen those shiny new spanners in that uh, bag of clubs there rich it looks like their new sponsorship deal went through this last week interesting luke i never have a problem with new equipment i think that it can actually change a player's mindset a little bit i think they can look at it as either a challenge to figure it out and say listen i'm smart enough i'm good enough to figure out how to make this equipment work they could also use it as a motivation, like, man, got some new equipment. I'm excited. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait to take these out for a spin. It's like a shiny new car. It just kind of depends on how the player is looking at and why did they make that change? What was the rationale for making the change from the old equipment to this equipment? Is it about the money? Is it about performance? What is it about? Because you can't discount the money aspect of it. You, you really can't. Hopefully they're doing it for more a performance aspect. And if that's the case, then they truly believe in this new equipment. And that certainly can help their mentality for the rest of the season. Yeah, we'll take that. Now let's change gears and head over to Bubba Watson. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Oh, what a shot from the bunker. And after that effort, this is how the field is shaping up. Let's see what happens here on the sixth. And after that part, they're looking for something good here. Henny, I'm sure you've got a better look of that lie. This reminds me of my breakfast. Nice fried egg. Gee, I think they've got the handle of this game, Rich. Fairways and greens. And a guaranteed birdie now for this player. Good stuff indeed. A bit too much pace on that one. It's just about three feet away. This is what they have left for par. Trailing by four strokes. Let's see what happens here on the seventh. That was a little untidy, wasn't it? Good shot there. And now to Bubba Watson. Yeah, he needs to press on that gas pedal. He's two strokes back from his rival. That got caught up in a few of the branches. 
That was never really a comfortable shot for them, was it? Got to believe the wind affected the golf ball there. A chance to get amongst the action of the top 20. If this putt drops. Ooh, right by the hole. Putting for par. Good looking putt. And as the scorecard suggests, heading up the leaderboard. Here we find ourselves at the dramatic eighth hole at Craggy Heights, a par three playing 198 yards from the back tees. Look, probably one of those picturesque par threes on this golf course, if not the one. Obviously, coming up shy is a huge no-no with water lurking there. You're going to see most players hit it deep into the green. Anywhere in the heart of the green really is just fine. Walking off with a par here is just dandy. And Henny, what are they looking at here? Careful not to leave this one short. It's back uphill and nothing worse than leaving an uphill putt short. That'll sting a bit. Well, that hole's behind us. More to play. This has to be one of the more difficult holes in golf. The long par four. Yeah, you hit a beauty, didn't you? Sitting at minus one, just outside the top 20. Opting for the five wood. Not the result they were after there. A bit short with that effort. Almost went down. And just a little bit of clean-up work remaining on this hole. Now let's change gears and head over to Bubba Watson. Birdied their last hole. Oh, wouldn't that have been nice? So after that effort, this is the current standings on the course. The leader now has a one-stroke advantage. Here we go. The tenth hole. That's not what they hoped for, I'm definite about that. And Henny, what kind of a shot are they facing this time? He's got uh, about 140, I'd say. Going with the five iron here. Wow, did this come out beautifully. <laughs> ah, great shot. And now to Bubba Watson. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Well, you like the look of those hands. You better believe it is great stuff to watch. School card filled with threes never hurts. Good putt to make this. Get the fist pump ready. This looks like it's going in. Appears to have overcooked this one. There's 17 feet remaining to the hole. This is what they have left for par here. Ouch, that hurts. And this one will be for bogey. And that ensures that he's back to even par now. Let's see what happens here at the 11th hole.
and choosing the eight iron here. Certainly good at making the birdies, but let's avoid those bogeys. Oh, that's a great approach, John. Already had a few birdies today. This for another. This one started out on a good line. One wheat picks too many, I think. Now oh, that's got to be frustrating. Hit such a great approach shot in, but wasn't able to convert. Oh, Rich love standing on this 12th tee here, a par five. You're always thinking birdie or perhaps better. Take us through it. At 555 yards, Luke, there still is a decision to be made off the tee for these players. Do they challenge the fairway bunker, but also bring in the water down the right-hand side, or do they just go ahead and lay it up to the left and make it a three-shotter? The bold players are going to knock it down to a sliver of an opening, and from there, they're going to be able to go for it. Second shot playing a little bit downhill. A little pond over on the left-hand side can be a little bit nuisance, but all in all, it's a pretty simple, straightforward par five birdies are in order. Well struck. And here we are with the third shot. That's tidy. Trying to get to one under here with this putt. Ooh. All right, Henny. What's he got in front of him here with this putt? This is a 12 footer here. Well, that'll maintain the momentum. Nice par putt. Now six strokes back after that hole. Let's head to this lengthy par four. Oh, that was pure. Second shot here on the 13th. Going with the 9-iron, nine I think. <laughs> Unable to find the green on this one. Well, he tried to fade it in there, but just didn't commit to it. How close was that to going down? Oh, I like the look of that shot there, Beamer. Judging it beautifully. Yeah, good job. Nice par. Now let's change gears and head over to Bubba Watson. He's two strokes behind his rival this week. Yeah, that's a touch of class. Terrific little chip. Oh, Dr. Chapinski strikes again. And a par four awaits at this next hole. Birdies are good. Harness them. Block the bogeys. They're bad. Oh, absolutely flushed. And Henny, what's he facing with this one? I'd say he's about 165 from this flag. Had a fantastic drive. Trying to get it to move a little bit to the left here. Yep, that shot safely on the green. And now to Bubba Watson. 
He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. And back to the course with the live action. Always nice to have a birdie putt. No, that's too bad. Looks like a pretty straightforward five-footer to me. This is what they have left for a par. So no movement on the leaderboard, remaining at even overall. Par threes always offer up that hope of a hole-in-one. Looks to be going with the six iron. We need this one to bounce right. Oh, what a lovely shot. He'll be delighted to be inside the range there. A chance for a birdie if this goes down. Oh, so close. Just three feet to the cup. Now let's change gears and head over to Bubba Watson. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? This looks to be heading to the green. Terrific shot into the 15th and a chance for birdie. So after that effort, let's take a look at the leaderboard. Stepping up to the 16th tee now. That looks to be a fairway finder to me. Even for the day. Well, that's a tremendous shot and sets up a wonderful opportunity. Using the big muscles to get it home in two there. So close to the eagle. Currently one under for the round. Ooh, don't we love a short par four, particularly on the penultimate hole, which 17 here playing under 300 yards. Look at just 283 yards. Listen, if you're not going to go for this green, you better just give up your tour card. I mean, literally, this is a, a begging to be gone. This hole is going to show you what kind of player you truly are. Take out the three-wooder driver. Knock it on the green. Make eagle. Make the crowd go wild. Anything less than that? No, thank you. Andy, if at that one. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? All right, down the hill here. Got to be gentle. Oh, he's up, Tiger. Trying to get to two under with this putt. Looking for another birdie here. A wonderful putt. You can claim it. Back-to-back -back birdies. Back-to-back -back birdies moving the right direction there, Luke. Now on the tee of a long par four. Oh, look at that. You don't want that ball back. Second shot here at the 18th.
looks to be going with the five iron. And how about that for confidence? Going right at the pin here in the midst of their rivalry with Bubba Watson. Love seeing that sort of play. And that'll bring his tournament to a close. Well, Henny, we saw some extraordinary shot making out on the course here today. We saw some phenomenal play when it mattered most. A win over Bubba Watson? You'd put that in your kit bag and take it. Absolutely you would. As we mentioned off the top, Luke, this player was gunning for the fearless Bubba Watson and they proceeded to beat him. It was a great performance to watch this week and I'm looking forward to seeing where this player's career goes from here. Well, on behalf of myself, Luke Elvey and Rich Beam, thanks for tuning in. Catch you tomorrow. Sports and the PGA Tour are delighted to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Serenity Championship is about to begin. I'm Luke Elvey alongside Major Champion Rich Beam in the booth and it's wonderful to welcome in Henny Koyak who's out on the course following our featured group. Hi Luke, I'm very happy to be covering this week's featured group. What a pairing. These two, they've been going back and forth at each other. There is quite the budding rivalry here. So it appears this player's target is to beat Ricky Fowler this week. That should be an exciting showdown, Henny. Yeah, Ricky Fowler sounds like he's up for the challenge on social media. He's been talking about this rivalry. Is Ricky ever not up for the challenge, though? He'll smile as he's beating you, that's for sure. Yes, likes to kill him with kindness, does our Ricky. He is a, a wonderful fella on and off the course. And with a renewed confidence in his game, the new father's looking to shine here. This will be a tough challenge for our rivalry. Do you like the view from where you're standing, Henny? Yeah, the breeze ruffling their shirt, hitting their back. It's going to be tough to control the distance here. The wind was howling, but that didn't matter. An opportunity for a birdie here. Getting off to a great start at this event. And that should calm whatever nerves this player has. Nice opening hole. He's currently tied for fifth. Let's go down to John McCarthy for our on-course report. And John, you've now had some time to walk the course this week before today's show. What are we in for today at the Jacobson Homestead? Well, Luke, yes, I love walking around this rural setting. Not a whole lot of trouble to start off with, but things heat up quite a bit when you hit the seventh hole par four. Has a dog leg left and a few bunkers and trees to deal with off the tee. Back nine opens with a narrow and lengthy par five, but that's really as tricky as it gets. I guess there is a it gets a little swampy on the 15th, uh, but the water generally won't be a factor for many players out there in the field. They saved the most challenging tee shot for the 18th, uh, which leads up to an elevated green for the approach. That will be a fun hole to watch this week. Hopefully provide some drama coming down the final stretch. Let's see what happens, guys. Mm, that's right out of the copy books. Exquisite. This putt about 11 feet in distance. Fantastic play so far, setting this up for the eagle. Not sure if they understood the lie of the land there, Rich. So far, so good. Now let's switch our focus to Ricky Fowler. Coming off a bogey on the last hole. Yeah, you like the look of that right off the blade. And that will move him up the leaderboard as well. So after that effort, this is what the leaderboard looks like. Time to see what this par four has in store. Yeah, that one will play. Few players have had the kind of impact on the game that Ricky Fowler has, and certainly being a fan favourite, Rich, it's funny when you see grown men 
dressed head to toe in orange supporting this uh, wonderful person. Uh, but I know he wants more out of his career bio than what he's got right now. And he will definitely get it as well, Luke. He's too good of a talent, and he has too much ability to not be a great player and be on the top of the leaderboard uh, definitely a few times during the season. He is definitely, if there is a Pied Piper in golf outside of Tiger Woods, I would put my thumb on, on Ricky Fowler just because so many people go out there dressed in the orange gear that he has. And whatever he does, they just love it. He's engaging. He's affable. He looks like he is enjoying himself on the golf course, which I truly believe he is. He really is one of these players that's so dynamic and so fun to be around. You can't help but root for him week in and week out. All right, facing a little up and down here to save the par. Oh, almost went in. And after that effort, that's how it looks. Now we're on the fourth tee here at Jacobson Homestead, and it's a par three, playing 181 off the back tees. Yeah, that's about as far as you're going to see this part of three play, Luke. Player's going to go in there with the mid, probably shortish iron. Obviously, with the water on the right, you want nothing to do with that side as the bank severely slopes downwards. Bailing out to left of the bunkers, not so hot either. But with just a short iron in your hand, you think that these players are good enough to fire right at it, don't you? Clubbing up, smart. Got to control it, though. Let's see. Playing within their comfort zone there. Outside chance here for the birdie. What's in front of them, Henny? They've just got to focus on hitting the back of the cup, guys. This is up the hill, bit of extra juice needed. Yeah, that looked to be a bit of a misread. Five feet coming up to the cup. Well hold. Trailing by a couple of strokes now. And now we find ourselves with a par four here. That should find the fairway. Playing from around 160 yards. Just two shots behind. Going with the eight iron here. Well, this one's going right at the flag. Oh, wonderful shot and a chance for birdie at the fifth. That's a good way to bounce back from the drop shot at the last hole. I will take that also into the top five now. Oh, well done. Rich, one of the big advantages for the experienced players on tour is their history around particular courses. But what advice would you give to the new players who are coming to a course for the first time and how to handle it? I would say tread easily. Go in there and just try to get into a good rhythm on the golf course. Don't try and go out and try and hit too many heroic shots or go after too many flag sticks because if you don't know 
what the consequences are if you don't pull off that shot, well, shame on you. So I think that the veterans obviously have more knowledge about golf courses and they can say, oh, I don't want to miss it there because that's dead. I've seen it happen before. When you go into a new golf course, Luke, you got to go in with it and just try and play a little bit on the defensive side. Don't get too greedy. Don't try and make too many things happen. Go in there, find some fairways, find some greens, hole a few putts here and there, get some confidence going first before you start attacking pins. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Tough bunker shot. No bother whatsoever for this player. They find the bottom of the cup. Be nice to see this one go down. Let's see if they make it. The old-fashioned hammer hands. That'll ruin any putter's stats. A par putter waits. This one's looking good. It was on a good line. Just a tiny putt is all that remains. Currently one under for the event. And moving down the leaderboard as well. Where did that come from? That's not his style. Henny, do you have a better look at this lie? Oh, this is sitting pretty. I might have to check to see if they teed this up. It's so nice. Now over to Ricky Fowler. Yeah, he needs to press on that gas pedal. He's two strokes back from his rival. Yeah, magical shot out of the bunker, that one. OK, let's get back to the action. Getting ready to play their third. Two strokes off the lead. That's a well-played chip shot there. Yes, very smooth tempo there on that chip. We've reached the eighth hole. Looks like they've got the five wood. Just needs this one to kick right. Not a bad approach, that one. Not quite inside the booty range, but you never know. Hole a long one, still counts. Long way away from the hole if they want to make the birdie, though. Oh, well, what a touch of class. Holes it from the sand. Now, this is one of those lengthy putts. Good one just to get close. Didn't quite have the right stuff there. This one just outside seven feet to the hole. Well done. Our current leader is enjoying a one-shot lead. Teeing off now on the ninth hole. shot from around the 200 yard marker four shots behind our leader going with the hybrid oh golf clap that's a beauty oh, good look at a birdie here What a putt started this perfectly. And with that, 
That's their fourth birdie. And with it, he'll move to a couple under par. Rich, good position for this player. Just three back with nine to play. Do you sense them making a charge? Yes, but three back with nine to go. They're going to have to start taking chances. They're going to have to start firing at every flag stick they can see. Time for the second shot at the 10th. Well, this one looks like it's heading to the sand. Now that's a poor lie. Will he be able to get out of here? They'll have to get their best bunker technique out here because this is nasty. Oh, what a wonderful bunker shot. Now let's switch our focus to Ricky Fowler. Yeah, he just made bogey on that last one. Wow, what a save. All over the parking lot, but a chip in for par saves the day. And this part to move into the top five. And racking up their fifth birdie of the day. And with that, he'll move to three under par. Tony Finau is currently on top spot as we pause for a look at the leaderboard. Always positive coming off a birdie. Let's see what happens here. Wow, that was just striped. That's a chance for a good shot here from the fairway bunker. Okay, phase one complete. Uh, but you've got to make a good putt here. What an opportunity to make a birdie. Nice stroke. Wow, that's classy. Good save from there. And that'll put a little pep in your step up and down from the bunker in for the birdie. Good job. And on the leaderboard, they currently sit second behind the talented Tony Finau. Managing to chase down the leaders, closing that gap. Got to like it. Opting for the five iron. Now over to Ricky Fowler. He's just coming off a drop shot on that last hole. Players sitting up, trying to get up and down from the bunker. Oh, that one. Oh, that's clutch. What a way to save your par. And this is why you've got to keep your foot on the gas at all times. These guys and girls are good. Time for the second shot at the 12th. That's almost a gimme. Great chip. Such soft hands. He's currently sitting in third. Wow, that was just striped. Sitting at four under for the day, currently in third place. Choosing the nine iron here. Always frustrated by missing a green. 
And what a rare miss today. They've been so good with their approach shots. Didn't that look good for a long time? Big pass over coming up for this fella. Right over the spot they were looking at. Now let's switch our focus to Ricky Fowler. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Oh, I thought that one was going in. Oh, that's a tasty looking chip. Top shot. Great touch. And we find ourselves on the tee, one of the stronger par fours on the back nine here at Jacobson Homestead. The 14th playing 483 rich from the tips. Yeah, generous landing area, thankfully out to the right hand side, obviously a bunker down the left. And if you miss it even further left, there's water lurking. But the second shot, this is where it gets slippery. This is where it gets dangerous, especially to a back right hole location. All of a sudden, the water down the right hand side comes into full view, bailing out to the left in the bunker. Not so hot either. I'll tell you what, it takes a brave player to fire at this flag stick. How close was that to going in the hole? Great shot. And here we are with the third shot. Just one shot back now. Ooh, that almost went down. Nice soft hands around the green. What a skill to have. Gotta say, his short game is phenomenal. So no change on the leaderboard for this player after that hole. Oh, exciting times on the tee of a par five. Absolutely tattooed that one. Time for the second shot at the 15th. Going with a three wood here. Now over to Ricky Fowler. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Let's return to live play now. Setting up to play the shot here from the green side rough. Wow, that almost went in the hole. Nice recovery there. You better believe it is great stuff to watch. Heading to the next hole, and this player is currently in a share of the lead with Tony Finau. And Luke, this rivalry we've been talking about is really looking like it will be down to the wire. Can't wait to see who comes out on top at the end of the event. Opting for the 9-9. Nine -nine. They're looking to get this one close in hopes of saving par. Oh, wouldn't that have been nice? Well, that's very crafty, isn't it? Just eyeballing that one, trying to make it. An opportunity to make their par. He's currently tied for first. Here we have a long par four. It's going to take two great shots to get on. That should find the cut stuff. Second shot here on the 17th hole. Going with the five wood. Can they get a little ground draw here?
Well, Rich, that's on the surface, but it's in free putt territory. It's so far away. Here's Ricky Fowler's next shot. Wonderful shot. Saving one there after being all over the parking lot, chipping in for the par. Setting up miles from the hole. What a great opportunity here for a look at a birdie. Oh, what a shame. That would have been a nice one to hole. Looking good. Yep, nice to make a mid-range par putt. Currently five under for the round. Rich, we find ourselves at the finishing hole here at Jacobson Homestead, and, and it seems strange to be playing it just at 400 yards. I tell you what, though, I like this finishing hole because it gives you options. You don't have to necessarily hit driver here. If you do, you got to take it over some pretty tall trees, and you can't miss it to the left-hand side. The safe plate, lay it out to the right, but now your second shot becomes just a little bit longer, a little bit more difficult to get it that close to the hole. I love the options you have on this finishing hole. A great opportunity for one final birdie. Going with the five iron here. That's definitely left of the green. That's not the outcome they're after. Wind is absolutely swirling in this part of the golf course. The equation's pretty simple. Chip this in and win the tournament. <laughs> well, this is it. They need this putt to force a playoff. Rolling end to end. Well, I didn't see it coming, Rich, but this one's going to a playoff. Well, Rich, it's time to find out who will win this in a sudden death playoff. Oh, and this tournament deserved it, Luke. So good all day long. This will be intense, Rich. So much pressure and these players won't be stopping until one of them wins the hole. Buckle up. Luke, I'm ready. Let's go. Yep, give yourself a pat on the back. Well, a big moment here. Really got to be aggressive if they want to have a chance in this one. With their opponent in there close, Luke, absolutely. Take dead aim. Going with the six iron here. Quality shot, that one. This truly is do or die. They need this to extend the playoff. Oh, just missed. That's awesome, Rich. What an outstanding performance by Tony Finau. An exciting end to the event. A huge shout out to Tony Finau, our playoff victor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoyed our extra coverage in this week's playoff finale. From myself and all the hardworking people at 2K Sports, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.